Okay, so I just want to highlight something useful with immunohistochemistry and squamous cell carcinomas and basal cell carcinomas. So here you can see a somewhat nodular proliferation of what looks to be a squamous neoplasm. You can see some areas of um, keratin pearl formation in the center of these islands. When you go on higher power, it does have a little bit of a pinkish purple color, not as much as you would see um, with a well differentiated in some areas, but other areas it's making a lot of keratin. So there could be a little bit of debate as to how you would grade this well differentiated versus moderately differentiated. But um, I would tend to call this well differentiated because there's a lot of areas of keratinization and it takes up most of the tumor. Although depending on which area you look at, you may think that it looks a little bit bluer, a little bit purple. So it just depends, but I think holistically it fits for a well differentiated to moderately differentiated squamous cell carcinoma. And you can see that the cells are very pleomorphic, um, numerous mitotic figures, prominent nucleoli. So um, it's got an invasive architecture here. It doesn't have an overlying connection to the epidermis that I can see here. So considering some type of um, either poorly oriented specimen or um, some type of metastasis, it's a little hard to say, but you can see that the sub Q fat and the epidermis is well oriented here on one edge. So this could definitely just be a deep invasive metastatic squamous cell carcinoma. There's a lot of fibrosis around this as well. Um, so sometimes you can make the diagnosis pretty easily um, without doing any stains, especially if it's got well differentiated features. There are some specimens though that may give you some pause because it looks to be um, showing mixed features. So here in the center of this biopsy specimen, you can see a neoplasm that looks pretty similar to what we saw in the last case. There's definitely an overlying connection to the epidermis. Um, areas of keratin pearl formation, some pleomorphism among the cells, some mitotic figures. Um, you might think that there's some, a little bit of mucin here, but it, it's probably just solar elastosis. Um, so most of the tumor looks like that, and that's pretty good for an invasive, well-differentiated squame. Over here, interestingly, at the top of the epidermis, you see a basaloid proliferation. You can appreciate this peripheral palisading of a basaloid architecture. The cells also display atypia and pleomorphism as well. Um, you'll find some areas where it's retracting between the tumor stroma or the tumor island and the stroma. So this looks like a basal cell carcinoma here. Um, so in this case, you could either call it basal cell carcinoma, half of it, and the other um, squamous cell carcinoma. But I think when you have these, these cases where you might be dealing with a collision between a basal cell and a squamous cell, it's always nice to get a BRRRP4 uh, or a BRRRP ep 4 also known as EPCAM, that can um, highlight the basal cell very distinctly from the squamous cell, particularly if this is on the face or some area that you're going to end up sending for Mohs. It's nice to have these ancillary tests to support it. So you can see that this BRRRP4 stain, very distinctly highlights the areas corresponding to the H&E that we were thinking was a basal cell carcinoma. So you can see it's kind of a superficial multifocal basal cell and maybe early nodular over here to the, to the side. And then the rest of the tumor that look like the squame um, is not really staining specifically for BRRRP4. So I think what we're dealing with here is probably a collision tumor. Sometimes you get basal squames um, that show differentiation more towards basal, more towards squamous. But um, this is definitely a tumor. If it's all one tumor, it shows areas of distinct basal differentiation, basal cell differentiation. Definitely just could be um, collision between a basal cell and a squamous cell and someone with a abundant solar elastosis and evidence of chronic sun damage. So this is just a nice case to, to illustrate the uh, specificity of BRRRP4, and it can be useful to separate basal cell and squamous cell carcinoma.